Hey, Storytime friends. How are you? If you haven't been to Storytime at Worthington Park before, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do all of the story times there. Today, we are going to be talking about the season that we're in. Do you remember when we talked about spring? And we were talking about the season of spring and the things that we might see and smell and taste and hear and that we might feel. Yeah, what do you what are some things that you know about summer? We're into summer now. Summer comes after spring in Ohio. And we are into I feel hot a lot of the time. The temperature is hot now, isn't it, outside? Yeah. What are some things you might hear? You might hear birds making noise. You still might hear people mowing their lawns like we talked about in spring. You might hear kids playing outside on swing sets or running around in the sprinkler. You might hear some of those sounds. Let's see, what's something you might taste in the summer? Well, berries are a big thing in the summertime in Ohio. Watermelon's one of my favorite things to eat in the summer. Hmm. Corn on the cob is a good summer thing. Not quite this early, usually that's a little bit later in the season. And we love to cook on our grill as soon as the weather's warm enough. So we would probably have some grilled chicken and things like that too. All right, let's see. What's something you might see in the summertime? You know what you might see? Little and they crawl on the ground. Can you think of what those might be? And they're sometimes black and sometimes red. Hmm. Ants. Yeah, you might see some ants. We have a lot that live on our table, out on our deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we might, we're going to talk about bugs in a couple weeks. Um, but I think we're going to do a little bit with ants today. What's something else you might see? You know something I'm seeing? Our lawns are going from green to a little bit yellow, aren't they? The grass is getting a little bit more yellow. The trees are getting pretty full. They have lots of green leaves on them. What about, did you start a garden? Is anything happening with your garden plants? Our green bean plants are really growing. They're getting so big. And our tomato plants are starting to get some starts for tomatoes. And our sugar snap peas are still giving us a couple of sugar snap peas. So you might have some fun things that you're seeing and some things that you get to taste out of your garden. I would love to hear what you see and smell. Oh, we didn't talk about smell, did we? You might smell a pool. You might smell a little stinky when you come inside after playing a long time in the heat. Yeah, that happens too, doesn't it? You might smell somebody cooking outside or we just had a big rain this morning and it smells very different after rain, doesn't it? Yeah, so there's lots of things you might smell, hear, taste. I wanna hear what you're thinking about. Let me know. Okay, so we are into summer. Summer's usually the hottest of our seasons and it always comes after spring and then it comes before fall. Yep, so we are going to read a little bit. I don't know if you remember, we read Mouse's First Spring, but now we're gonna read Mouse's First Summer. And it's still by Lauren Thompson. All right. And it's from Simon & Schuster. One sunny summer day. Mouse and Minka came along to play. <gasps> what are they in? What is that thing called? Do you know what that is? It's a picnic basket. Have you ever gone on a picnic? They're super fun. We're gonna talk a little bit more about picnics too. <gasps> Tiptoe quick, off went Minka. Wait for me, said Mouse. What's over here, wondered Mouse. Drippy, sweet, wet, red. What is that? Watermelon. Tasty, said Minka. <gasps> What's under there, wondered Mouse. Marching, munching, bold, black. What are they? Ants, out of the way, said Minka. What's down there, wondered Mouse. Tipsy, tumbly, tickly, green grass. Wee, said 
said, Manka, do you ever roll down hills in the grass? You should give it a try. A couple years ago, my kids talked my mom into rolling down a big hill with them too. Yeah, it was fun. What's up there, Wondering Mouse? Oh, so high. What is this? Bright blue sky. Okay, mosquitoes happen. Oh, said Minka. What is this for, Wondered Mouse? F fluttery float? An orange kite. Do you see the kite way up in the sky? Back outside, please. Hold on, said Minka. Not right now. Outside. What's in here, Wondered Mouse? Sweet tart sip? Yellow lemonade. Oh, yummy. Yep. Oops, said Minka. What happened to the lemonade? Good job, girls. Outside. <laughs> what do we do with this? Wondered Mouse. What is that? Oh. Nibbly crumb, soft white bread, and sticky smooth. What color? Brown peanut butter. And jiggly drip. What color? Purple jelly. Yum, said Minka. Oh, what's all around, wondered Mouse? Wink, blink, flyer, fireflies glowing. Have you ever seen fireflies? That's a really fun thing we see in the summertime. I forgot about that one. Once it starts to get dark, you'll see fireflies coming out. Oh, try to catch one, said Minka. Then crackle, pop, boom. What is that, Wondered Mouse? That's a sound we didn't talk about today, did Fireworks fly every color in the sky. Hooray, said Minka. Hooray for summer, Mouse. Hooray, you did a great job with that story. I have another story about ants that I thought we could do right now. Are you ready? This one is called Five Hungry Ants. Can you help me count to five? All right, I need my kiddos to go back outside. See if you can find five ants. We wanna watch you. You can watch it later. All right, have you ever seen one of these? Guess what? This is a box with an open up lid that I glued a little bit of felt onto the front. So I can just use the box and I can store my flannel stories in it. So the ones I made from my house live in here. I have one that when you put it together, it looks like a famous licensed snowman from a movie about a snowman and some girls and a reindeer. Okay. Uh, and then I have, oh, I have some other ones that we made in here, but these are the ones that my kids get to play with at our house. And we made this super easily and we get to have lots of fun with the flannels. But today, I'm going to use my flannel board that I made right here. And we are going to count to five hungry ants. Are you ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, I'm almost there and I'm almost out of space, aren't I? Ready? Oh, five. There's the last one. All right, ready? So we got one, two, three, four, five. All five of them are there. Ready? Five hungry ants marching in a line came upon a picnic where they could dine. They marched into the, what is that? Salad! That was very healthy of them to start with the salad. They marched into the, Cake? Ooh, that's a fancy cake to take on a picnic. They marched into the pepper. Oh no, what a mistake. Do you know what pepper does? It makes you sneeze. Are you ready? Uh, uh, All right, did you fake sneeze with me? Good job. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on my lamp that I set things on. I really should give you a behind the scenes sometimes. 
It's pretty silly. Okay, you did a great job with that. I can think of a song about sneezing, but Mr. Jim Gill sings it better than I do. Are you ready? All right, I'm gonna put him on. Remember, Jim Gill said we can use any of his songs in story time. Oh, I think I need to make it louder. That's not loud enough. Please don't feed me black eyed peas. You know what it'll do. It's too low for me. Isn't or it? if you feed me black eyed peas. Ready? We're going to fake sneeze in just a second. Have to sneeze. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Sneeze, doesn't it? Oh, ready? Don't, don't feed me macaroni, macaroni and cheese. You know what it'll do. Ready? What's it gonna do? If you feed me macaroni and cheese. Oh no, here we go. Have to sneeze. Uh, Oh, yeah, one more. Please this one's my favorite. Chocolate chip, chocolate chip cookies. cookies. You know what it'll do. Ready? Or if you feed me chocolate chip cookies. Oh, no. What's going to happen? I'll have to sneeze. Are you ready? Uh... like that one? That one's silly, isn't it? You did great. We practiced all of our sneezing. I know. Remember, when we sneeze, we're sneezing into our elbow because our elbow doesn't ever open the doors or shake hands with people. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I have an audience in here and it's throwing me off. I always think when I do the sneezing song, this is probably what the thumbnail is going to be. So I'm going to be frozen like this. Probably, huh? Okay, yeah. let's go ahead. Nope, not right now. Back outside. We're going to read another story, and this one is about something you might do in the summer. It's about a swimming pool. Do you have a little swimming pool in your backyard? All right. Hey, girls, you could stay in here, but you have to be super quiet, okay? Okay. Ready? Oh, we have a swimming pool in our backyard. We've gotten lots of use out of it this year. Ready? This one. Oh, I love this one. It's such a fun summer book. The Whale in My Swimming Pool, and it's by Joyce Wan. <laughs> Race you to the pool. Uh, whoa, a whale? Now, friends, have you ever gotten to your swimming pool and found a whale sitting inside of it? No. Me either. I bet this book is just pretend. What do you think? Is it a real story that's giving us real information about whales and swimming pools? No. no. It's just for fun. Are you ready? Mom, there's a whale in my swimming pool. Great, honey. Don't forget about sunscreen. Sunscreen on the whale? I think maybe mommy wasn't listening. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. she looks pretty into her book. Okay, I'm gonna close my eyes and count to 10 and when I'm done, you'd better be gone. Ready? Okay, let's try it. Ready, close your eyes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Hmm. Is the whale still there? Kind of, huh? Maybe you just need a little help. Ugh, like he's trying to push the whale out. Now, here's some real information about whales. They're super heavy, so you couldn't just push it out of your swimming pool. No. Why my pool? Why not the pool next door? They have the best pool on the block. Look at that pool. Can you see a reason why maybe the whale doesn't want to swim in that pool? There's a shark. 
How about a game? Fetch! I, I, don't, I don't think whales fetch sticks. I don't think that's a thing. Honey does. Oh, here, fishy, fishy. Oh, he's trying the old carrot on a stick method. See if he can get the whale to move that way. Wouldn't you rather swim with other whales? I'll give you my allowance. What if we take turns? Tag, you're it. Oh, this is hopeless. Now, I want to take a minute and celebrate this little boy who was so smart that he went and got a person with a crane to try to get the whale out of his swimming pool. That's a pretty impressive plan, isn't it? The problem is, do you see what happened to the string? Yeah. Yeah, one of them broke, didn't it? Hmm. How will I ever get this whale out of my pool? I'll never get to go swimming ever again. I give up. What's he feeling? He looks like he's feeling frustrated to me. What do you think? Wait a minute. I have an idea. Wait here. I'll be right back. Oh, what was his idea? Being on it. Yeah, he's on top of the wheel now and it's splashed. Well, maybe this is not so bad after all. Nap time. Coming, Mom. He's being on the wheel. Oh, what is in his bed? What is that? A bear. Oh, no, there's a bear in his bed. And you know what he says? Oh, great. He snores. That's what he says. <laughs> oh, now he has to try to share his bed with a bear. What a day. All right. You did a really good job with that silly story. Do you know a song about goldfish? Do you know a song about goldfish? We're going to sing a song about goldfish. Are you ready? First, we're going to go to sleep. Ready? Lots of little fish were sleeping on a rock in the bottom of the ocean. They lifted up their heads and they shook out their tails. You can stand up and do it. It's better that way. Ready? Mm -hmm. And they said, let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Yeah, let's go swimming, let's go swimming, let's go swimming in the bottom of the ocean. Ready? Then the little fish got so very, very tired that they came back to the rock. And they put down their heads and they put down their tails and they took a little nap. And when they woke up, they decided to take a shower. Are you ready? And they washed their hair. And they wash their ears. And they wash their tummies. And they wash their beards. And they wash their nose. And they wash their toes. Geeky your toes. And then they said, Wait a minute. We're fish. We don't take showers. What do we do? Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Yeah, let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. Let's go swimming. In the bottom of the ocean. You did so great with that. If you want to do the whole rest of the song, that's a Lori Berkner song called The Goldfish Song. It's not called Let's Go Swimming. It sounds like it should be called Let's Go Swimming, doesn't it? I agree. But if you look on YouTube, you should be able to find Lori Berkner's version. All right. I'm going to pause for just a second and kick some beautiful children back outside. No! Yep. All right, thanks for waiting, friends. Let's go ahead and do our next story. Oh man, it's a good one. You know what? I should let my kids stay in here because this one does a lot better if I have somebody to talk to me. Yeah, because guess what? This story is Chalk. And it's by Bill Thompson. And the super tricky and wonderful thing about this story is that there are no words in it. It is a wordless picture book. Have you ever read a wordless book? One of the things I love about doing this is that when we do a wordless picture book, you can tell me the story. 
so you can make up whatever story you think the pictures are telling you. All right, this one's chalk. I love playing with sidewalk chalk in the summer. Do you do a lot of sidewalk chalk? I love making artwork. All right. Ah, ready? This is from Two Lions Press. <gasps> Whoa, what is that toy? That's a pretty cool dinosaur toy. There's a park in Pell that has that dinosaur toy. It's pretty fun. Oh, and what kind of weather are they having? Can you tell in the picture? Hmm, it's a little hard to tell. Hopefully you can tell based on what they're carrying. What do they have on them? I see an umbrella and raincoats and rain boots. What do you think? It's raining. Yep. Oh, and they find what's in that bag. Oh, a little clue with the name of the book, huh? Chalk, that's right. They found some chalk. Let's see, what are they gonna do with that chalk? Oh, this girl has a great idea. What is she gonna make? Oh, she drew the sun, didn't she? With what color? With the yellow. What happened to the sun that she drew? What is that doing? Have you ever had a picture that you drew with sidewalk chalk do that? It's turning into the real sun. What about now? What's happening? It's going up into the clouds. And now it's not a rainy day. It's a super sunny day. Oh, look at that. She has what color? She has peach and she's going to draw. It's hard to tell. Hopefully you can tell. She's drawing butterflies that are turning into butterflies. They're coming right out of the pavement. The pictures in this are so beautiful. I would really love if you want to check this out from the library. Did you know you could check things out now? Yeah, if your grown up will request things online, you can come drive up and stay in your car and we'll bring stuff out to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, look at all those butterflies go. Isn't it beautiful? The illustrations in this book, the pictures, they're just amazing. Oh, look at the boy. He has an idea. See him? Oh, he's drawing something. What do you think he's drawing? Ah, what did he draw? He drew a dinosaur. Oh, no. Do the kids all look like that was a really good idea? What do you think? No, they look so scared. I would be really scared if I saw a real dinosaur, wouldn't you? Oh, no, now they're all running away from the dinosaur. <sighs> oh, they're climbing onto the play structure, trying to get away from the dinosaur. Oh, man. Oh, it was really smart to go inside of the tube slide. Oh, that dinosaur's gonna get them. What should they do? Do you have any ideas? I don't think I would have any ideas. I think I would be very stuck. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's right outside of the tube slide. Look at that. And look at the details even in her hair. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, he has a really good idea. Now, sometimes I wanna tease the boy because it wasn't a very good idea to draw a dinosaur at all. But here's his good idea. What is he drawing? Play. Oh, man. Look at that big, giant raindrop. Oh, oh, the rain is. What's happening to the. What's happening to the dinosaur? The rain is making the dinosaur wash away. Oh, because he was made of chalk. And you know what happens when you spray chalk with water? It washes away. <sighs> oh, man, that was stressful. What happened? It all washed away. Now it's just a green puddle. And then they put the chalk back up. I don't know if your grown-ups remember the movie Jumanji, but I think they're unleashing a Jumanji-type situation here by putting the chalk back up. And then they walk away in the rain. All right. You did a fantastic job with that story. I love the illustrations. So I don't know if I, 
<laughs> expressed this enough, but you really should check this book out or give it a try at home so that you can see the pictures up close because they are just beautiful. Um, I had a couple other books I thought you might like checking out at home um, from the library if you can. If you still aren't getting books from the library yet, you can look into getting any of these books. Um, let's see, I have a couple about summer. I had a hard time narrowing it down this week. So this one's called Summer, all the way over there. It is, and it's a story that kind of goes all around the world. So you might really enjoy that one. The next one is Mama Is It Summer Yet? And it has these beautiful retro feeling illustrations um, that you might really like. Let's give it a try. The next one is called This Beach Is Loud. And guess what? I love this book. It's part of a series and the series is all geared toward friends who might be on the autism spectrum. So this one, they're all by Samantha Cotterill, and it's in the Little Senses is the name of the series. It's really fantastic. There's one called Broccoli. Oh, it's something about eating broccoli. And it's No Yuck Not For Me or something like that. Super fun. But it's about trying different foods. And this one is about when some place is too loud and it's a little bit overwhelming. So they're very sensitive books. They're beautifully done. Uh, the next one that I wanted to remind you about that you probably know is The Little Mouse, The Red Ripe Strawberry, and The Big Hungry Bear. I love that one. I thought about doing that one too. It's by Don, Don and Audrey Wood. And then, oh, should I share my ice cream is always a fun read from Elephant and Piggy. And then the last book that I have over there, oh, I'm probably too much in the way. Um, we read a few weeks ago. That's the only reason we didn't read it today. But Jabari Jumps. Um, if you remember, that's the story of the little boy who was maybe a little bit scared to jump off the, the diving board. And he and his daddy worked together until he felt brave enough to do it. Do you remember that one? Oh, I love that story. That's a fantastic read for summertime too. So those are some of my recommendations. I couldn't narrow it down. I had a really hard time today, but I didn't want to make it a super, super, super long story time. I had some ideas for things that you can try at home. One of the things I was thinking is that if you wanted to try to make your own flannel board, like I said, you just need to cut out or you need to find a good box. So if you order pizza and the pizza is not super greasy and you can take out the inserts so that there's not grease inside, that's a good type of box to use. This one I think was like a steak box or something like that. But you can glue the felt on the top of it so that when you lift up, you can store any flannels that you make inside of there. And you can find lots of patterns online for flannels. Um, growing ups are fantastic ways to work on storytelling, but they're also really good ways to work on shapes, um, counting, things like that. So I wanna make sure I told you about it. Let's see. Uh, another idea I had was that you could play in a sand and water table, or if you don't have a sand and water table, you could just put some sand and some water into little bins. If you have any just um, sensory bin type things, and you could play with it that way. And especially outside, it always makes for a nice, easy cleanup. Littler kids, you could even put a little bit of water just onto a cookie sheet and then let the babies splash in the cookie sheet. Lots of fun. Okay, I was also thinking you might have fun making something called cloud dough. You can look at the recipe online. It's pretty easy to make. Or kinetic sand. I don't know if you've ever made kinetic sand, but it's lots of fun to play with. It is. So either of those would be fun sand type ideas. You could also go on a picnic with your family, just like we talked about with the ants coming to the picnic and Minka and Mouse going to the picnic. So you can take, even if you're just taking a snack outside to eat it in the grass, that's a nice change. All right, my last idea was that you could make bubble art or popsicle art. I don't know if you've ever tried to make that, but with bubble art, you would put a little bit of food coloring into a, a soap combination that would make bubbles and then you blow it onto paper. Or for popsicle art, you could freeze some food coloring and water into popsicle containers or ice cube trays or anything like that. 
with some popsicle sticks in it and then you can paint with the popsicles you could use real popsicles but it might be a little bit stickier and that's a waste of a perfectly good popsicle so those are some of my ideas i hope that you are having a fantastic summer and enjoying some of this lovely hot weather and some of these fun summer senses uh, take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon. I love you. Bye.